Tammy Wynette and George Jones, two legendary figures in the realm of country music, shared a love story that was as tumultuous and passionate as the songs they sang. The couple was known for their roller coaster ride of highs and lows that captivated fans nearly as much as their chart topping hit. Tammy and George's stunning homes also reflected the highs and lows of their careers and relationships. The nearly 10,000 square foot mansion George bought Tammy in the early 1970s is part of country music history, dubbed First Lady Acres and located in Nashville. The Lux estate boasts nine bedrooms and nine baths, along with features like a theater, putting green, helipad, swimming pool, and much more. While many renovations were done to the property, some touches remain such as Tammy's closet, which is largely the same as the early days. As their marriage unfolded, the couple also shared a home in Lakeland, Florida during the peak of their fame. The love story of Tammy Wynette and George Jones began in the late 1960s when they first met at a recording session. At the time, both were rising stars in the country music scene, each with a string of successful solo careers. Later in 1968, the duo recorded what would become one of their most iconic songs, Golden Ring. The song told the story of a marriage falling apart, mirroring the real life struggles that that Tammy and George were facing in their relationship. Despite the challenges, their chemistry was undeniable and their voices blended in a way that resonated with audiences around the world. The couple's personal lives were far from smooth sailing. Both Tammy and George had experienced previous marriages and their relationship was affected by the demons of addiction and personal strife. Jones, known for his battle with alcoholism, often found himself on a rocky path and Tammy, well, she had her own personal challenges. Their love story played out in the public eye with tabloids chronicling their highs and lows. Yet despite the difficulties, there were moments of genuine tenderness and love. Their on-stage chemistry was electrifying and their performances together, well, they were nothing short of magical. Songs like We're Gonna Hold On and Near You showcased the depth of their emotional bond. Despite divorcing once, they couldn't stay apart for long and they remarried the following year. Their second marriage, like the first, faced its share of challenges, but it also produced more musical collaborations, including the song Two Story House, based on their home in Florida. Tragically, the love story of Tammy Wynette and George Jones didn't have a fairy tale ending. The couple divorced for the final time, but their love story is immortalized in the songs that they created together. The one-time homes of Tammy and George also reflected the highs and lows of their relationship. So let's take a look. Tammy Wynette's former home, often associated with her rise to stardom, was the last lavish estate known as First Lady Acres. Located in Brentwood, Tennessee, this sprawling mansion was a symbol of Tammy's success in the 1970s. First Lady Acres became a hub for Nashville's social scene, hosting glamorous parties attended by big shots from the music industry. George bought this property for Tammy as a wedding gift, and she lived at First Lady Acres up until 1992. The home had underwent a major renovation in recent years by developer Meg Epstein and Sharon Underwood. So its formerly 70s style decor was replaced with a much more contemporary look. The sprawling nine bedroom, nine bath mansion is tucked away on over eight private acres of land in the Oak Hill neighborhood. Inside there's nearly 10,000 square feet of open plan living space as well as nine beds and nine baths throughout. The home also had multiple fireplaces, stunning hardwood floors, large and bright windows, and bathrooms decked out in marble. The chef's kitchen boasted a hearth as well as glass doors and a butler's pantry with wine wall. Aside from the comfortable living areas, there was also a formal dining space for entertainment. Teenage. Other highlights include a home theater, steam room, fitness room, and a separate studio structure with glass garage bay doors. There's also a snuggery. While most of the home has been modernized after the recent reno, it still had some touches of Tammy throughout, including her one-time fabulous closet, which hasn't changed much. Outside on Tammy's former property, the sprawling acres had a swimming pool, cabana, outdoor kitchen, fountain, putting green, and even a helipad. You'll even feel secure with the combo storm shelter and safe room that comes with the property. In 2017, First Lady Acres ended up selling for $3 million. Now, on the other hand, George Jones once lived in a modest home in Beaumont, Texas, where he actually spent his early years and developed his passion for music. This humble abode stands in stark contrast to the extravagant estates that later came for George and Tammy. 
As their marriage unfolded, the couple also shared a home in Lakeland, California during the peak of their fame. This residence witnessed both the joys of creative collaboration and the strains of personal struggles between Tammy and George. The house, like their relationship, was a mix of highs and lows, with moments of happiness and conflict echoing through its halls. George bought his vacation home in Lakeland in the late 1960s, and soon after marrying Tammy in 1969, the couple moved to the Lakeland home full time. While it has been renovated over the years, the property still has much of the original decor from when Tammy and George called it home. Reportedly, plantation style mansion was built in 1902 by lumber magnate H.B. Carter. The 6,390 square foot home was called the Old Plantation, and it became a place for Tammy and George to entertain their famous friends. They built a concert venue on the property named the Old Plantation Music Park. Here, Loretta Lynn, Johnny Cash, Conway Tweedy, and dozens of other top country artists performed. There were happy times in the home, but the couple also often found themselves at odds with each other. Their duet two-story house was reportedly inspired by the problems that arose during their marriage while living in the Florida estate. Tammy and George's former home sits on seven acres and boasts 16 rooms, including four bedrooms and four bathrooms, as well as separate entertaining quarters. The cozy living room has huge windows that allow lots of natural light inside this space. And then on the lower level, you'll find white wainscoting, adding a touch of southern charm to the halls. The cozy master bedroom that Tammy and George once shared has plenty of classic, elegant charm. Moving out to the grounds, there are a handful of features, such as a horse barn with four stalls and even a pool in the shape of a guitar. In George Jones' book called I Live to Tell It All, he wrote that his time in Lakeland with Tammy was filled with good memories, stating, at that time, I was happier than I'd ever been. However, Jones was known for his wild behavior. Tammy said in her 1979 autobiography that she woke up at 1 a.m. one night to find her husband left from their Lakeland home. She drove to the nearest bar 10 miles away and found their riding mower in the parking lot. He'd driven that mower right down a main highway, Wynette wrote in Stand By Her Man. He looked up and saw me and said, well, fellas, here's she is now, my little wife. I told you she'd come after me. In 1972, Tammy and George moved out of the home before divorcing a few years later, later selling this abode for $550,000. While their time in two-story house didn't have a happy ending, it still stands as a unique remnant from one of country music's most legendary relationships. More recently in 2011, the Florida property was put up for sale for $2.3 million. As we can see, the stories of Tammy Wynette and George Jones' homes mirror the narrative of their careers and their relationship. A blend of glamour and hardship, success and turmoil. These residences, whether opulent or modest, stand as reminders of two of country music's most enduring and influential figures. While their homes may no longer echo with their voices, the stories and memories created within those walls continue to mean something to their fans. Before we wrap up this house tour, answer this question for me. Would you prefer to put down roots in Florida or Tennessee and why? Let me know your pick in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss out on a video. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I will see you all in another one. Bye.